to tell you that I have to leave it. I have to leave at six o'clock. I have to tell you that. You know, I have sure. a meeting with Emunah every Tuesday. Uh, that's a little group in Israel. All right. All right. Let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we would not rush into thy presence, for thou art the Holy One of Israel. Nevertheless, you invite us to enter your courts with praise and your presence with thanksgiving, because we have an anchor within the veil, even Yeshua, the Lord Jesus himself. So we come in his name. Uh, many things have been legitimately busying us today already. Uh, with us, it's five o'clock in the evening. Most of the day has gone. But Lord, we want to just thank you for your enabling power uh, and helping us in the day-to-day -day tasks in which we've been involved earlier today, including me, uh, leading prayer meetings. So Abba, as we come to this time together, we pray you might draw in those whom you want to be touched. Uh, we thank you for all that is past and we do trust you for all that is to come, particularly for our people living in Israel. Lord, with the, uh, uh, the Druze being very upset, uh, they, are, they might take things into their own hands. Um, so we just pray, Lord, that you will keep your hand on the whole situation um, and just bring about a measure of stability. We know that uh, maybe Israel will have to go into southern Lebanon and deal with Hezbollah. We don't know what your plans are, but we pray, Lord, you'll open the ears, the inner ears of those who are leading the military and for the political leadership of the nation. Lord, have mercy upon them. We know that uh, although they keep winning prizes for uh, biblical knowledge, Lord, that's not enough. They need to know you personally through Yeshua. So, Abba, will you have mercy and forgive their folly and trying to think through and fight this out themselves instead of leaning on you? The scripture is very clear. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So, Abba, we just pray that you might bring that well-known text from Proverbs 3 into uh, make it live for those who are in leadership positions within the land. And now coming back to our local situation, Lord, we pray that you'll guide our thinking, our guide our praying, and encourage us with a sense of your presence, Abba. And we pray that for the glory of Yeshua. B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach Adonainu V'goel Am Yisrael. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Oh, what a beautiful prayer. Thank you, brother. Outstanding. I love it. Well, yes, yes, yes. Now, this first slide features, of uh, course, a person opening the book, the entire book. We look at the entire book, not just one old, quote, old section or, quote, new section. The entire word is to be in our lives and for us to individually honor it fully. And here we are looking at Isaiah 55. The whole book of Isaiah is so coming alive in our lives today. It just speaks to our moment Amen. in history. It speaks to where we are. This is a translation of Isaiah 55 verses 5 to 12 in the complete Jewish Bible, which uh, you can find at a website. It's called BibleGateway.com. It's got 40 or 50 different versions of the Bible. It's free to join that, BibleGateway.com. So here's Isaiah 55, 5 to 12. It says, you will summon a nation you don't know. A nation that doesn't know you will run to you for the sake of Adonai, your God, the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. 
seek Adonai while he's available, call on him while he's still nearby. Let the wicked person abandon his way and the evil person his thoughts. Let him return to Adonai and he'll have mercy on him. Let him return to our God, for he will freely forgive. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, says Adonai. As high as the sky is above the earth, are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. For just as rain and snow fall from the sky, don't return there. But water the earth, causing it to bud in produce, giving seed to the sower, bread to the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me unfulfilled, but it will accomplish what I intend and cause to succeed what I sent it to do. Yes, you will go out with joy. You will be led forth in peace. As you come, the mountains and hills will burst out into song, and all the trees in the countryside will clap their hands. Oh, yes, Lord, we just honor your word. We just pray this for Israel today. We pray many will come into your kingdom, even as so much is being shaken all over the earth by your hand. So may many come to you with joy be led forth in peace and may the mountains and hills burst out in song the trees in the countryside clap their hands <laughs> praise god well let's look at the next slide here again isaiah this time isaiah 41 there's so many others we could have picked Isaiah 61, of course, really speaks to us today, too. Maybe next week um, we'll make a change there and include that one. But this is so temp timely for where we are today in Israel and the rest of the world. It says, you, as Israel, my servant, Yaakov, whom I've chosen, descendants of Abraham, my friend, I've taken you from the ends of the earth, summoned you from its most distant parts, and said to you, you are my servant. I've chosen you, not rejected you. Don't be afraid, for I'm with you. Don't be distressed, for I'm your God. I give you strength. I give you help. I support you with my victorious right hand. Yes, they need to hear this in Israel today. All those who are angry with you will be disgraced, put to shame. Those who fought against you will be destroyed, brought to nothing. You will seek them, but not find them. Those who contended with you. Yes, those who made war with you will be brought to nothing, nothing at all. Oh, does that speak to today? For I, Adonai, your God, say to you, as I hold your right hand, have no fear. I'll help you. Have no fear. Yaakov, for your worm, you men of Israel, I will help you, says Adonai. Your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. I will make you into a threshing sledge new with sharp pointed teeth to thresh the mountains, crush them to dust, to reduce the hills to chaff. As you fan them, the wind will carry them off. The whirlwind will scatter them. Then you will rejoice in Adonai. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. Yes, 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 Lord. Bring this alive in our hearts and minds today. May we share these slides with other people, uh, teaching them your remarkable word so timely today. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. How we're going to now pray for the captives using this beautiful video that our sister Carolyn Hyde has produced. She has a wonderful ministry in Israel, Messianic Jewish lady, beautiful woman of God. Their website is www.heartofgod.org, and God is g-d.org, heartofg-d.org. 
So, Lord, we just pray, even as we watch this, we pray for the return of these hostages. Only you can do that type of remarkable move, opening it up for that return. In Yeshua's holy name, amen. Amen. So, praise God. We now watch this beautiful Bring Them Home video. just honor this perhaps with your heavenly language of up to several seconds or a minute or so and see if there isn't any message from the Lord on this whole issue of the hostages Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Oh, bring them home, Lord. Thank you. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Anyone have a prayer in your heart? 
um, with respect to the hostages and what the Lord's plan is here. Go on it, head, um, if, if it's on your heart. Hora bashoto. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I just get a sense of the peace of Christ about this, even as it's a horrific situation. He's um, always in charge. Matthew 28, 18, the Lord said, the risen Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah said, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And so this is clearly under his authority. So Lord, we just look to your perfect plan in Yeshua's holy name. Amen. Amen. Yes. And welcome Armstrong. Welcome from, uh, are you still in the Congo brother? Uh, he's nodding. Yes. Praise God. Well, this is great. We have South Africa, we got the Congo, we got UK, we've got uh, Idaho in the States here. And our focus is on Israel, rightly so. Well, let's look at the next slide. You know, this is just such a profound and simple truth, and that is this living God of Jacob is looking for people all across the planet who have Ruth's heart for the Jewish people. Willing to swear a covenant of love and loyalty to them as the firstborn nation of Yahweh. And look at this out of the first chapter of Ruth, this beautiful book of Ruth that is not taught enough in uh, quote, today's Christianity, it's it's so rarely talked about, may be the case that many pastors and priests have not ever read it. But it's a beautiful, simple book saying, obviously, that Naomi had a choice to return to her pagan nation, but instead, I'm sorry, Ruth had the choice, but instead wanted to follow Ruth. So praise God. So I'll just read this into the record. It said, behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. This is Naomi speaking. But Ruth said, don't plead with me to leave you or to turn back from following you. For where you go, I will go. Where you sleep, I'll sleep. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Yes, that's what we need on this planet. Where you die, I'll die. There I'll be buried. May the Lord do so to me and worse, if anything but death separates me from you. And then she saw that she was determined to go with her. She stopped speaking to her about it. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And as you're pondering that, what do we need to do in our various nations to have that nation completely have a heart for Israel and the Jewish people? Listen again to this beautiful, really a worship song by another brother in Jerusalem, Messianic believer, Baruch Harris, and the, the worship song is Never Again. Never again will your people stand alone Never again will they be left without a home Never again will they think they have been abandoned For all will know this is the place God has his hand on Never again will we dare avert our eye From the land Led away silently to die Never again let our country bar the doors 
to the tattered ships that flee from deadly shores. Never again, never again, hero Israel, never again, never again will you hang your head in shame, for your God has brought you back to praise his name. Now a kingdom has awakened to your pain Though around you gather all the hordes of hell They'll face the power of God's love for Israel Never again allow the world to turn its head And pretend innocent blood has not been shed for our God has joined us spirit, flesh, and bone. We shall be to you a wall of living stone. Never again, never again. Hero Israel, never again, never again. your pain though around you gather all the hordes of hell they'll face the power of God's love for Israel never again never again will I close these eyes to sleep till I remind my God of the eternal promise he must keep to lift up his holy people and his temple before men And cause all the earth to praise Jerusalem Never again, never again I promise Israel Never again, never again Will you hang your head in shame For your God has brought you back Praise His name Never again Never again I promise Israel Never again This is a warning To all the hordes of hell You'll face the power Of God's love for Israel You'll face the power Of God's love for Israel when I lay down my life in love for his right, yeah. Praise God, I love that. I love that. I love that. They're going to face the power of God's love for Israel. <laughs> That's the mightiest power on the planet. That's beautiful on the universe, praise God. And welcome Pastor Anthony from Kenya. We love you, brother. Wonderful to have you and also Sabita. Amen. Thank you yeah. so much. Yes, yes, yes. So glad you joined, brother. Praise God. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. You know, this is one of my favorite slides because it's it's just simple. It's okay to be simple sometimes, not to be overly intellectual or theological and all of that stuff. Here's a person simply loving and praising God. And the more you do that, the more you praise him, despite all that's going on during your day, and so forth, your life, the more you praise him, the more you want to cleanse, the more you want to repent, you want to get closer to him, then the more you repent, the more you want to praise him. So it's this beautiful process. There's a man just 
opening his mind and heart and, and his arms to receive the love of God and just in turn repenting and praising him. So many places, especially in the book of Psalms, so many places where praise is vital and recommended. One of them is Psalm 72, 15. Prayer also will be made for him continually and daily he shall be praised. Yes, 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 yes. Psalm 148. There's so many beautiful ones in this, especially 148, 149, 150. This one is praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his hosts, it's exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, of the children of Israel, a people near to him, praise the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Praise God, praise God. Anyone want to pray right now on how You've been praising the Lord and how this is an insight for you to just continue to cleanse. The more you praise him, the more you want to repent. The more you repent, the more you want to praise him. Is, is that a um, insight that you've had? Any one of you want to comment on that? Go ahead. <laughs> Well, praise God. I just, for me, this has been very important. I'm, I'm a beginner at this and um, need to praise him more than I do. And I just see how it's a beautiful spiritual circuit, circuit, if you wish. It just, the more I praise him, the more I want to praise him and the more I want to cleanse from the old man and be a new creation in Christ clean as a Holy Spirit vessel for him. So praise God. By the way, you're welcome to these slides. Just email Susan or me, and we can send you a copy of these, and you're welcome to share them in your prayer teams and so forth. So praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Well, this is just a whole beautiful page of Adonai's gift of Shuva. Shuva means to return to God. It's that powerful and simple. And to this, this week, I was quickened to Jeremiah chapter 8. Oh, my gosh, is that strong? But especially in verse 6. That's the second one down here underneath Job 36.10. In Jeremiah 8.6, it says, I listen and heard, but they don't speak aright. No man repented of his wickedness, saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his own course as the horse rushes into the battle. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So this is what happened to Israel at one point. This is a warning for each of us in our lives personally, and then for our nations. It also applies, even I would say today to Israel, God bless them. So many ways they are very secular. There needs to be repentance among them. So this is a wonderful, if I may say so, a teaching slide it's not complete. There's many more scriptures we could have added. But here we have some wonderful teachings here. Look at Ezekiel 14, 6. Therefore say to the house of Israel that Adonai Elohim says, repent. Turn yourselves away from your idols. Turn your faces away from all your disgusting practices. How timely is this today? I don't know how many of you watched the opening of the Olympics in Paris, France, and it was vulgar. It was disgusting. They mocked the Last Supper. They had a drag queen. It, it was just pagan to the most, just horrific. 
And so every nation needs to repent. Every nation needs to repent. And just jumping down this page, Hosea 3, 5 says, Afterward, the people of Israel will repent and seek Adonai their God and David their king. So there's hope for the future. They'll come trembling to Adonai and his goodness in the latter days. Akarit Hak Amin. Yes, yes, yes. So there's there is hope in every nation and especially in Israel. And the other one I want to point to, well, there's two others. Key one, of course, we all know Second Chronicles 7 14, but I'm going to also quote here 7 13. This is the Lord speaking to Solomon 3,000 years ago, and he speaks to you and me and our nations today. If I, that this is the Lord speaking, if I shut up the sky so that there's no rain, or if I order locusts to devour the land, or if I send an epidemic of sickness among my people, that would include moral sickness, then if my people who bear my name will humble themselves, that's step one, pray, that's step two, seek my face, three, and then four, turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heavens, forgive their sin and heal their land. So the Lord gives us a godly strategy to heal a nation where there are his people, just among his people to do that. Oh, how we need that in every nation that is on this call today. Everyone listening, this meeting's being recorded and live streamed. So we're reaching other people in many nations. It's applicable to your nation. And then I would also point out Luke, the very last chapter of Luke, chapter 24, in verses 45 to 47. This is like a great commission call from the risen Christ, the risen Christ having walked for 40 days among his people. Then he says, then it says, he opened their minds so that they could understand the Tanakh, telling them, here's what it says, the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And in his name, repentance leading to forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed so you and i are to do that in other translations it says is to be preached so it's to be proclaimed to people from all nations starting with jerusalem so instead of sitting in a church instead of sitting in a synagogue instead of sitting in a event somewhere you and i one-on-one -on -one are to be proclaiming this reality that the messiah was to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and then it, in his name repentance leading to forgiveness of sins is how you get into his kingdom how you get to be born again and become a member of his kingdom. So I just encourage each of you, this, this is not just for someone who's a quote, quote, pastor or a priest or a rabbi, it's for everyone. Um, everyone who's at all called by the Lord as were those first disciples. So praise God. Anyone have a comment? I've been talking a lot, but I certainly want you all to jump in at any point. Any comment on any one of these scriptures about Shuva, Adonai's gift. Yes, it's a gift, not a punishment. And I guess also here it is saying on the slide, who's got a prayer in your heart for this gift to be spread among all Jews and Gentiles? It's, this is a gift that has been almost hidden it's a treasure buried that needs to be brought to the surface repentance is a gift shuva is a gift
Anyone have a prayer for that? Go on ahead. Oh, you're all being quiet. <laughs> Going ahead, anyone who's got a prayer in your heart. Because so many earlier we were looking at uh, Isaiah 55. Yes. And there it says, seek the Lord while he can be found. Mm -hmm. Call upon him while he is near. Lord, that's the first thing the Spirit does for us and did for me, Lord. Thank you that you made me aware that I was a sinner and mm. you gave me the unction to call upon you when I was in distress. And here he says, that's not enough. You need to forsake your wicked ways. The sinful man, his plans, let him turn back to the Lord, Teshuvah again. And he will not only pardon him, but he will abundantly pardon, it says in uh, the Amplified Bible. So, Abba, we thank you that it is a gift. Teshuva is the first step of getting to know you and getting to know that wonderful sense of freedom of knowing that you're right with God. Mm -hmm. There is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, that walk after the Spirit. Thank you, Abba, for those promises which we've, uh, I trust each of us have experienced in our hearts. And Lord, it's given us a freedom. It's given us a joy. It's given us a sense of shalom. That really means that inner well-being that comes from being right with God. Lord, mm. being cleansed from within is so important. Oh. And we just praise you that you lavish this wonderful gift upon us and lord we do pray particularly for our people in israel particularly the leadership and those who affect people's lives oh our god we just ask that you uh, grant them the gift of repentance of teshuva lord help them turn away from their wicked ways sometimes not deemed wicked by the world but just normal uh, Lord, but help us, help the nation as a whole to turn away from those ways, to face you, to, um, you have promised again in 1 John, uh, if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin, and most importantly, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, Lord, what a wonderful God you are. Thank you for revealing yourself to us. Thank you for the mercy you gave us in forgiving our sins when we didn't deserve it at all. Thank you for your great grace. Abba, we love you because mm. you loved us first yeah. and opened our eyes. Thank you, Abba. B'Shem Yeshua, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, I love it when you pray, Tom. That was spot on, brother. Beautiful prayer. Anyone else want to uh, pray at this point? Sabita or any of you? Yeah. Yes, go yeah. ahead, brother. Yes, go uh, ahead. Yes, yes, I just want to add on him. Uh, the gift of uh, Teshuva. Um, led, uh, in the day, earlier in the day, I was reading the Bible from the book of Ezekiel, and then I was seeing the the uh, prophecy that God gave Ezekiel through the the scroll, the scroll that He gave Ezekiel that He should prophesy to the nations. So uh, I got something that was very special that. Uh, in the prophecy, uh, he is encouraging us that we should, uh, we should make sure we we pass on the message of repentance. We reach out to the nations, we preach the message, so that uh, everyone should should come to the uh, to the knowing of the the will of God upon everyone's life, and especially he 
he addressed the Israelites, the people that really know Jesus Christ, that they, they know everything about him, but then they deny deliberately. So as it is now in Israel, I see that uh, people know the truth. They know whatever it is that they should do, the right thing that they should do. But then it's like the groom is just reluctant to go back to Jesus. So this is the right time that uh, Ezekiel prophesied that we should indeed uh, pray for Israel. We should indeed preach the message. We should indeed uh, come together and in one accord cry to God for the nation Israel so that Israel should come back to the Lord. Yes, Amen. that's well, what well. I Beautiful. Well, Sabita, why don't you put that in a prayer? Go ahead. Okay. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We honor you for the grace. We honor you for the gift of repentance and salvation that, Lord, uh, this is prophesied that the nation Israel will come back to you. The nation Israel will once again be called your glorious. We honor you for that and we pray that your word and your will will be done over the nation Israel and that Israel will be delivered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. That's a beautiful, strong prayer. I totally agree. God bless you. That's perfect. Praise Amen. God. Yes, yes. May we all keep that in prayer every day on your prayer list. It's so beautiful. Thank you. And how perfect that you got that reading the book of Ezekiel. It's just so good. The, those beautiful old books, if I may say old, chronologically they're old, but they are fresh today. They speak to us today. And we need to bring that into the ecclesia, the body of Christ. The bride, the Lord calls us his bride all over the planet. He's the soon coming bridegroom. So all of those words are so powerful and timely today. Let's look at the next slide. Yes, yes, yes. Now here again, the whole book of Psalms so full of the beautiful gift of repentance. The obvious one is in Psalm 51 by David, a beautiful entire prayer. These are the several verses 10 to 13, where he says, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew in me a resolute spirit. Don't thrust me away from your presence. Don't take your Ruach HaKodesh, that's the Holy Spirit, away from me. And then also, we could have cited others, but here's Psalm 26, verses 1 to 6. I'm sorry, Psalm 24, 1 to 6. He says, the earth is Adonized, all that's in it, the world and those who live there. For he set its foundation on the seas, established it on the rivers, who may go up, here we go, who may go up to the mountain of Adonai, who can stand in his holy place? Those with clean hands and pure hearts who don't make vanities the purpose of their lives or swear oaths just to deceive. They'll receive a blessing from Adonai, justice from God who saves them. Such is the character of those who seek him, of Yekov, who seeks your face, Selah. And just ponder all this, the clean hands and pure hearts, as you listen to this beautiful song again, a worship song by our brother in Jerusalem, Baruch Harris. This is called Turn Around. Just receive the truth of this beautiful song. He's your father, he's your brother, he's your comforter and friend. He's your God and he's your lover, he will be there till the end. If you follow him, he'll lead you to a place you've never been. He made heaven just for you. 
and he wants you to come in. Turn around, turn around. He is knocking at the door. Turn around, turn around. You've been in this place before. He has called you many times. Each time your heart has been at war But this could be the last time It's a time you can't ignore Turn around Shuva 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 Stop and listen to the message From the messenger he sent said, if there is a God, won't someone tell me where he went? Messiah died so you could live. That's what he said, that's what he meant. And he rose to open heaven, if we only will repent. Turn around, turn around. He is knocking at the door. called you many times each time your heart has been at war but this could be the last time it's a time you can't ignore turn around Shuva 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 well repentance is so easy all we have to do is say that we're sorry that we wanted just to do things our own way but when your way has left us bankrupt devil says it's time to pay there's another way called calvary we can fall on his mercy turn and listen to the message from the messenger he sent you said if there is a god won't someone tell me where he went he is waiting right behind you if you just open the door he once loved you to death and he wants to love you more That man is so anointed. I love that music. Yes, yeah, it's just gifted. The Lord loves to loves to talk to us through these beautiful worship songs. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's anyone have a comment going ahead. Otherwise, let's um, look at the next slide. Armstrong, you've been so quiet. Pastor Armstrong, I know you're there. I can see you, but we want also any prayer that's ever on your heart going ahead. There's your big smile. I can look at you. Thanks so much. There's something that God has put on my head, on my heart in John oh. chapter 2, verse 12. Uh, it says that yet even now, it is a declaration of Adonai. Turn to me with all your hearts, with fasting, weeping, and the lamentation, lamenting. Rend your, your heart, oh. not your garment, 
and turn to Adonai, your God, for yes. he is gracious and the compassionate, slow to hunger, abundant in mercy, and the relating about the calamity due. For Tim to say that, who knows, he may turn and relent, and they may leave a blessing behind him. So there is so there may be a grain offering and drink and a drink offering for Hadonai, your God. Oh, so praise God. Pray. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Father, we thank you, yes, Lord yes. Jesus Christ. For yes, yes, yes. We to, together. Today, Lord Jesus Christ, I know that you are very patient for us. And that we come to you with all our sins. And mm -hmm. we need your forgiveness. We know that we are a lot of thoughts. We know that we have done a lot of things. But today, Jesus Christ, we need you and we want to come to you. As Israel is going through difficulties, I'm praying also for this nation. You know, Israel, Heavenly Father, you know, the way our Israel is scattered in all the world. But I believe, my God, you are powerful to bring Israel together. I'm praying for Israel. Let those born that are scattered come together. And I know victory belongs to you. My Father, we pray for Israel. We pray for salvation of this nation. As it's surrounded with main enemies, Lord Jesus Christ, fight for Israel. I believe, mighty God, you will do great things in Israel, and the people will turn their heart to you. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer, brother. I love it. That was spot on. Excellent. Praise God. Amen. And welcome. We have another person joining us just by the name of iPhone. <laughs> Praise God. Welcome. You are welcome to this call. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Now, this is a teaching slide for you to use with your prayer team, your church, your worship leaders, your friends, whomever. It's not complete. Really, we could have added another page or more. These are all based on scripture. And if you just go to the very back of your Bible, most Bibles have a concordance, which means a, almost like an index. You look up the word repentance, and it will give you many citations all throughout the Bible. These, on this page, many of these are connected to the, quote, New Testament, but you can find connections going back to the, quote, Old Testament. It's all his word. It's all one word. And the key teaching here at the very beginning, this has been so central, and sadly, it has been dropped out. But instead of playing church, the Lord, when he knew it was time to preach, he went to Galilee. He had learned that his friend and cousin john the baptist had been jailed and we read in matthew 4 17 and in mark 1 15 his very first word yeshua jesus's very first word repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand he could have said love your neighbor well he did that later he could have said shalom he did that later his first word was repent. So how is it that many pastors and priests drop this out and they count people sitting in a pew or a chair and say, well, we have a lot of people there. There are a lot of members and yet none are called to repent. We have to be bold and say, when we do teach and preach, Everyone needs to repent to join the kingdom. You're joining a kingdom, not a church, not a denomination. It's not about Protestant or Catholic or Jewish or Orthodox. It's about the kingdom. 
Yeshua's kingdom, Jesus's kingdom. And to get in there, that's the key that opens the door to that kingdom is repentance, turning back to God and saying, Lord, I exercise my free will. I repent. I'm sorry. I won't go that direction ever again. And I want you to be Lord of my life. I want your direction. I now change my focus in life. I have a whole new 180 degree view of reality and life i want to follow you using your word and i walk i will walk it out that's what repentance is it includes walking out your change of conduct it's not enough to say oh gosh i'm sorry i got angry last week at my nephew well okay but that's not enough there's no change in your heart or your mind. You have to act absolutely issue a change from your own conscience, your spiritually mature thinking that says, I don't want to act that way. Lord, would you help me remove that entire pattern? I want you in the kingdom. I want to be a new creation in Christ. I repent. I change my thinking. I change my way of conduct. And I'm going to walk it out and display this to other people. That's another key that's not yet on this page. If you read Matthew 3, I think it's verse 8, John the Baptist says, bear fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, show people that you truly have repented. Give them the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the first one of which is, of course, love. The second is joy. So you need to be walking that out in your everyday life. And then people will say, wow, I see new life in you. You've changed. What's happened to you? And you can say, well, I've repented. I changed my thinking. I used to look at the world. I used to look at the flesh. I used to look at the, my ego, the pride of life. And then I gave it up. I repented. I changed my thinking. And now I'm focusing on God's kingdom. I want to be a strong believer in God's kingdom. I want to walk it out. So that's repentance. That needs to be taught. And then repentance is, of course, the other way ongoing by which you remove old sin patterns. They're called strongholds. They're called like a barrier that blocked you from God and from God's word. Those old lies of the devil you were born into or they were passed down into your family, your culture. You now can repent and cleanse and remove those so that you get to be a partaker of his holiness. The Lord calls you and me to be holy as he's holy, it says in 1 Peter. So it, the gift of repentance is, is not a one-time thing. It's an everyday thing. And it's a powerful, beautiful spiritual shower, if you will, to cleanse yourself of these old patterns into which we were all born. It says in Ephesians 2, verse 3, I think it is, that by nature, you and I were born children of wrath. You were born in rebellion because Adam and Eve sinned. Rebellion was then handed down generation to generation, and you and I were born into rebellion. So often we see this in the temper tantrum of a little two-year-old child, born into rebellion, wanting to do things your way. And the truth is, at some point, to be a true Christian, you have to give up rebellion and humbly repent, return to God. That's what it means in Jewish language. Shuvah means return to God. Shuvah. 
So praise God. The other one I would point out here is once you've gone into the kingdom, you then receive the Holy Spirit. It's the only way by which you can get the Holy Spirit is by being in the kingdom. And once you're in the kingdom, you can have his calling on you revealed. We're teaching this to young people in Malawi with the out training. And it comes straight from the book of John, chapter 15, verse 16, where the Lord says, you didn't choose me, but I chose you. And he says this to the first disciples. He also says it to you and me today, 2,000 years later. I chose you and I anointed you to go and bear fruit. That's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And starting with love. Go and bear fruit that whatever you ask, the Father, my Father, in my name, he may give you. And then verse 17 says, and this I command you, that you love one another. And I believe those two are, are joined together very strongly. Once you find your unique calling, there's a deep, deep joy. It's unique to you. There's no competition. You're a member of this beautiful spiritual family, uh, the temple uh, created by Yeshua, so to speak, a spiritual temple. He's the cornerstone. Another way of looking at it, you're a member of the bride. He's the soon coming bridegroom. And there's no competition. You're all part of the same team. And it gives you such a deep joy to know that when you were born, when you were planted in your mother's womb, the Lord had a calling on your life. The Lord had a calling on Armstrong and planted him where he is now and has a calling on his life. It's unique to him. Only he can do his calling and there's no competition. He doesn't have to be like me or Susan or Sabita. He's just going to do his calling and there's such a deep joy as you walk that out that it's easy for you to then be an ambassador of love to love other people and bring them into the kingdom and say, once you're in the kingdom, seek the Holy Spirit and find your unique calling. What would a nation look like if it were filled with people who had found Jesus, they had found Yeshua, they found the kingdom, they came in by repentance, and then each then found his or her unique calling. What would that nation look like? Wow. It would be illuminated into godliness and righteousness unlike any other nation on the planet. And that's the, that is the game plan that the Lord has for Israel it's the game plan for the Congo. It's the game plan for Malawi. The game plan for the United States, for South Africa, for Australia, for China, Japan, Brazil, Canada, and Fiji, etc. So praise God. Praise God. Use this slide as a really good teaching resource. And obviously, I could keep going on, but let's look at the next slide. This, too, is a very important slide. We don't teach this enough in, quote, Christian churches today. This beautiful book of Ephesians, full of spiritual truth, maybe one of the most powerful books in the Bible out of the 66 books. The book of Ephesians just is uh, take a whole year as a course of study in a, in a biblical college. Well, here it is in Ephesians 2, verse 13 to 17. It shows you how enmity has been removed. Here it is in the complete um, Jewish Bible translation. But now you who were once far off have been brought near through the shedding of the Messiah's blood. For he himself is our shalom. He's made us both one and has broken down 
the chitsa, which divided us by destroying in his own body the enmity occasioned by the Torah with its command set forth in the form of ordinances. He did this in order to create in union with himself from the two groups, a single new humanity and thus make shalom. And in order to reconcile to God, both in a single body by being executed, oh my gosh, on a stake as a criminal and thus in himself killing that enmity. Also, when he came, he announced as good news, shalom to you, far off, shalom to those nearby. Wow. So enmity has been removed. The Lord has left us with his peace, as it shows there in that beautiful graphic Peace I leave with you, my peace I give it to you. That's from John 14. Wow. Now we're going to take three minutes of private time with your teacher, Ruach HaKodesh, and see if there's any enmity in your heart. Maybe your family taught you to have enmity towards another tribe, towards another nation, towards another person. And you may think, well, I think I got rid of it, but we will honor your privacy. It's private, but see if you're open to removing it, if it's there. And later on, if after this three minutes you want to share, of course, we welcome that, but it's private. Make sure there's no enmity. And I'll check back in in three minutes. So God bless you. Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit. Now, again, it's private, but does anyone want to share going ahead? Hmm. Well, I'm just thinking, what would it look like if in any nation, the pastors and priests preached this 
often, if not on every single occasion that they hold a church service, wouldn't this begin to heal a lot of the division in that nation? Instead of growing up hating other people who are locally there right next door, another tribe, another nation, a different group, indigenous people, um, or people who've come afterwards, as is the case in Australia, in the US and so forth, or South Africa. There's so much division. There's a lot that's born into families. We have to remove it because already 2000 years ago, Jesus, Yeshua, removed it. And his plan, which is being put into practice, is for us to be one new man, a single body. We're reconciled by his blood to God in a single body, one new man. So I just pray, Lord, I just pray this would be preached. I pray this truth would be preached, that this would be instructed to every young child in every nation. They would grow up loving other people, every person being a miracle instead of being a topic of hatred, jealousy, friction, animosity, and enmity. I just pray there would be a powerful move of this truth that the kingdom is about a one new person's man and woman, one new man, one bride, and Yeshua, Jesus, is the soon coming bridegroom. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Anyone else have a prayer for this enmity having been removed? Go on ahead. So praise God. Well, Armstrong, are you preaching this when you preach? I just have to ask you, brother, are you, is this something that you've preached about the removal of enmity? Yes, hello. All right. Yes, Pastor Jeff, what are you saying? Good. That Well, I was asking if you do preach this, the preaching that enmity has been removed. Is this from time to time part of your teaching or preaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We preach about the enmity uh, that has been removed. Uh, Good. Uh, yeah. That's so central for every nation. Every nation needs this. Thank you. Well, yes. praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Now, here we have a simple prayer for the revelation that people would find the Messiah. Sadly, there's so many that do not believe that the Messiah has arrived. Many in Israel today are very secular. And those that are, quote, religious, many believe that the Messiah has not yet arrived. Now, the good news is there are some, and they are growing, that believe that indeed Jesus or Yeshua was the Messiah. They are becoming what's known as Messianic Jews. So here, this is a simple prayer. I'll just read it into the record because we're being recorded and live streamed. It says, O Holy One of Israel, that's based on Psalm 89.18. We bring you, capital Y, in remembrance that your covenant with Israel through David was an everlasting covenant. That's a site from 1 Chronicles 17, 11 to 14. We pray that the devil's strategy to bring terror and destruction to Israel will backfire and that you will turn the evil perpetrated against your chosen ones to good. That's Genesis 50, verse 20. 
Father, we pray that you will orchestrate the desperate heart cry that will cause the veil over their hearts, as it says in 2 Corinthians 3.16, to be rent in two, bring them into the presence of their Messiah, Yeshua. O oh Lord, open their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. That's straight from Luke 24, 45, which I quoted earlier. So that, quote, in their affliction, they will earnestly seek God and acknowledge their offense before him. Hosea 5, 15. And so all Israel will be saved. As it's written, the deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. That's Romans eleven twenty six, which we are about to quote in the next slide, I believe. And then continuing, it says, Oh, that my people would listen to me. This is the Lord speaking, capital M. My people would listen to me that Israel would walk in my ways, exclamation point. I would soon subdue their enemies, turn my hand against their adversaries. That's Psalm 81, verse 13 and 14. Ah, uh, yet they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts and went backward and not forward. That's out of Jeremiah 7, verse 24. The whole book of Jeremiah is just a call to today, where we are today, to return to God and to receive the Messiah. Well, praise God. Use this. You can even modify it. A dear sister of ours wrote this. You can write one. It's power to give this to people, have them read it out loud, join you as you read it. And it's a blessing when we pray and put the scriptures into action. Well, let's look at the next slide. Now, here is this Romans 11 prayer. It's so timely for Jews to find that indeed Jesus, Yeshua, is their Messiah, thereby that they can come into the kingdom. So in Romans 11, 23, it says, they also, if they don't continue in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. Or if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are natural branches, yes, the Jews are the natural branch, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I don't desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, the blindness in part has happened to Israel. Yes, this was God's plan until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all this is verse 26 now, Romans eleven twenty six. So all Israel will be saved. As it's written, the deliverer will come out of Zion. He will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sin. Yes, yes, yes. Now, does anyone have a prayer for Jews to come into the kingdom? Anyone have that prayer in your heart? Go on ahead. Well, Lord, that's my simple prayer. Many would wake up even in this time of oh, great testing and frustration and fear and shaking going on in Israel. Their economy is depleted. Lives are being lost. Hostages are still held. Bombings are taking place. Oh, Lord, in all of this, may many come into the kingdom. May they come in. May that be one of the 
positive results of this horrific time. May many seek you, come into the kingdom, find the Messiah in Yeshua. And I pray in his name, amen. Amen. Anyone else have a prayer for Jews to come into the kingdom? Go on ahead. Well, okay, then let's look at the next slide. Now, that's who we are, the way that he sees us. He sees you as a member of the bride. It's past tense. In other words, whether or not we know about it, whether or not we are working towards it, it's a, a fait accompli, it's happened. The bride has been created and here it is out of Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. This is in the complete Jewish Bible translation. It says, as for husbands, love your wives just as the Messiah loved the Messianic community. Indeed, he gave himself up on its behalf in order to set it apart for God, making it clean through immersion in the mikvah, so to speak. That was the the pool of water that a Levite priest would cleanse physically before they go into the temple. So this is a figure of speech. And here we go. In order to present the messianic community to himself as a bride to be proud of without a spot, wrinkle, or any such thing, but holy and without defect. Yes, this is his intention. You and I would come into the kingdom. We would honor the reality that he wants us to be holy as he's holy. And as a bride would, even in the natural, want to be on that day of her wedding, she would be cleansed. She would be looking proper. She would not wear old, ragged, dirty clothes. She would be cleansed. So this is the way the Lord already sees you, a member of the bride. Whether you're a man or a woman, you're a member of his bride. And you're called to be clean. And that's repentance. Repentance is the way by which you cleanse. Now, here's the good news. Look at Revelation 19. And then Revelation 22, in 19, 7 to 9, it says, let's rejoice and be glad. Let's give him the glory. For the time has come for the wedding of the Lamb, capital L, and his bride has prepared herself. Fine linen, bright and clean, has been given her to wear. And fine linen means the righteous deeds of God's people. The angel said to me, right, how blessed are those who've been invited to the wedding, the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he added, these are God's very words. So, yes, not only are you invited to this beautiful wedding feast of the Lamb, but also look at this out of Revelation 22, nearly the last verse of the last book of the Bible, the Spirit and the bride say come so the lord is so beautiful joining us in his final call i mean he could have done this alone as the spirit but instead he includes us the spirit and the bride say come let anyone who hears say come let anyone who's thirsty come let anyone who wishes take the water of life free of charge. Yes, you and I are going to be making that very final, final, final call for anyone on the planet to come into the kingdom, eternal life with Yeshua in heaven. Your eternity will be in heaven instead of hell. And you are free to take this water of life freely free of charge. Wow. So here we have on this slide, 
suggestion who's got a prayer for more believers in uh, the messiah M yeshua seeing themselves as a part of his bride and removing spots or wrinkles becoming more holy this is a teaching that needs to be taught does anyone have a prayer for more believers among us to see themselves as part of his bride and to be cleansing to becoming more holy. Any of you have that on your heart going ahead? Yes, 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 yes. Well, Sabita, you had a beautiful prayer earlier and I'm putting you on the spot again. Are you able to hear us and pray? for more believers in the Messiah to remove these wrinkles, becoming more holy? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Father, we thank you, we honor you for the right time at the right place whereby Lord, your presence is so tangible. And, uh, and as we pray, we know that your glory, Father, is manifesting. In a lot of those lives, we pray, Father, for the atonement, blood, atoning blood to cleanse and wash away each and every person that has not yet come to you. We ask you, Lord, for the sufficient grace that more and more souls be saved tonight in the different place they are. Ask God, you manifest your glory of, re of salvation repentance in different situations let every each and every situation that people are encountering wildly lead them to the repentance and salvation we ask you all that in your name and in the power of the blood nations be saved israel be saved yes the redeemer lives and you are the redeemer of all nations and all people we ask you father that you manifest your glory and your power of salvation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, beautiful prayer. Spot on. Thank you, sister. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. And by the way, Susan, I was looking at your earlier chat about Jeremiah adding that. Yes, yes, yes. I say yes. That really spoke that beautiful scripture out of Jeremiah. Well, let's look at the next slide here now. Yes, yes, yes. This is the one key process to share with your team. I believe this is really important in the body of Christ, in the bride. I think we have forgotten how to do this almost. It's almost forgotten certainly in the quote western church whatever that means that that would be a church in so many ways conditioned by the um, english churches and then passed down through the commonwealth and to other nations we have a lot of formalities but this one key issue of keeping the unity of the spirit has been almost lost. We're very divided. We call ourselves Christian, and yet we are quite divided. So let me quote two key verses here, same ones, Ephesians 4. In verse 3 in the Amplified, it says, Be eager and strive earnestly to guard and keep the harmony and oneness of and produced by the spirit in the binding power of peace. Wow. In other words, go the extra mile, be eager, strive for this earnestly to keep the harmony and the oneness of the spirit in the, in the power of peace. And I also like it in the message version which you can get, by the way, at BibleGateway.com. Just go under the, there's got to be 40 or 50 different versions for free. You can check on it. This is the message 
which includes verses one to three out of chapter four of Ephesians. This is the way that this man translated that word. He says, in light of all this, here's what I want you to do. While I'm locked up here, a prisoner of the master, capital M, this would be Paul speaking to the Ephesians. I want you to get out there and walk, better yet, run on the road God called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. Yep, that's the case in a lot of churches today. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline, not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love. Wow, I love that phrase. Pouring yourself out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. Wow, I'm going to read that last part. It's the, in effect, verse three of Ephesians four, pouring yourselves out for each other in acts of love, alert at noticing differences, quick at mending fences. Wow, so you're going to have three minutes of silence to ask your helper, the teacher, capital T, the Holy Spirit, if you have even a remnant of this spirit by which you failed to go this extra mile to keep unity, you can ask them, where did this first surface? Is it a family propensity? How does it show up in your life today? So this is private. This is you and the Holy Spirit for the next three minutes. If later you want to share, that's fine. Let's see if this is still an issue with you that you have been failing to go the extra mile to keep unity, to mend fences. <laughs> so God bless you. I'll check back in in three minutes. God bless.
Uf, la bașoto, ca așa la bălete. Well, praise God. Thank you for spending time with the Holy Spirit. Again, this is private, but does anyone want to share where you're at with this issue of failing to go the extra mile to keep unity? If you want to share, go on ahead. Well, in my experience, being a pastor for 18 years, in my small little community of about 1,200 people, there were six churches that called themselves Christian. And there was a lot of jealousy. There was a lot of division. And we did not come together frequently to seek unity and i repent i tried several times but i repent that i did not go the extra mile even this extra 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 mile to mend fences and so lord i repent this is why this is such a key issue for me I did some, but not enough. And I think you have to almost be a fool for Christ, so to speak, that you, you continue to ask for times of prayer with your brothers and sisters to remove the unity, to remove the division, and to create unity, reestablish community, and frankly, part of the other issue was that many of these so-called Christian churches were not born-again Christians. I was the one pastor of a church where we believed that Pentecost was true today as it was 2,000 years ago. We were moving in the Holy Spirit. The other, quote, Christian churches were, as far as I could see, um bereft of that spirit they didn't have the holy spirit they were playing church and thus they didn't want to connect with me so i just pass this along to you that are um pastors or priests worship leaders prayer leaders go the extra mile yes 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 and susan's making a good point ephesians 4 3 to be quick in mending fences Fits in so clearly also with removing enmity. Yes, they go together. There's no enmity. There, it's been replaced by Yeshua's blood. His blood covered the anger, the animosity, the hatred, the division. So therefore, we can truly love each other. You can love your enemies. How much more than in the body of Christ... Should we be loving and mending fences of other brothers and sisters? Instead, we get upset. Oh, well, you didn't do this the right way. You didn't do this the right way. You're not doing this. You're not a member of this denomination. No, all of that is man's way of, or really the devil's way of trapping us into division. Well, praise God. Anyone else have a comment um, before we move on? Yeah, go ahead, Sabita. Thank you so much. Um, yes, as I've written in the comment section, uh, my 
community and uh, is a huge division in our family. Uh, um, my aunties and my uncles, uh, since the death of my father in, in, 20, in the year 2022, they were so much uh, uh, eager to take uh, the things that my, the, the properties that my father left for us as children. So they managed to take everything in the farm. They confiscated the document of the farm and they chased us out of the uh, houses of our father after uh, a day after burial. So up to now, it's like they don't want us to reach to reach to them. They don't ask. They don't want us to come near them. They are just like they they are on their own and they don't want anything to do with us. But I um, think that God should uh, uh, their heart so that we can come back together as a family. So I'm asking that as we are praying. Uh, put my family in the in 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 prayer or prayer so that God will intervene and touch hearts, change us. I'm praying that God should forgive us and even them in whatever way we have wronged Him and the event for things that maybe we have done unknowingly. But um, I really want us to unite. I really want us to be one family because even if my child is sick, my aunt can never come and see my child. They are the early brothers and sisters of father, but they are so far away from us. Even our nieces and nephews, we don't talk since 2022. Even write my message, they will just ignore you. We have been trying. So, yeah, that thing also when I am praying in the ministry, I'm, I'm right back because I'm seeing I'm leaving something behind and then I will go forward, but things are not okay on the other side. Yeah, so I'm okay. appealing to uh, everyone here. To, we, we hold hands together and pray for my family. Yes, how beautiful. Thanks for being so honest and transparent, Sabita. Thank you for the courage to do that. Who's got a prayer for Sabita mm -hmm. for the healing of this family going ahead? Pastor Armstrong, do you have that prayer in your heart? Go ahead and pray for your sister in Christ. Yes, let us pray for our friends. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we honor your name today, Lord, because you are so good. Before the beginning of the world, you know this family, this family, it is in your purpose. Today, my God, I'm praying for my brother, Sebita, as he's going through difficulties with his family. I believe, Lord, you have the power to make them together. And that today, Lord Jesus, I pray this spirit of division in their family, in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak oneness in their family. Let them speak one word for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of misunderstanding in the family, I destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, I speak this family let them come together and speak one word for your glory. I believe, Father, your blood was shed so that people can come uh, together and glorify your holy name. Let your blood purify everyone and let your blood make them to recognize that everyone has his faults so that he can repent and they come together for your glory. I believe, my father, you are going to deal with this problem in their family, and devil will never succeed. Every weapon that is forged against this family, I destroy it, I burn, I burn it in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak life, I speak peace in this family. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. What a beautiful Amen. prayer. The Lord just showed me how this is so prophetic, what you have both prayed. This is, this is just prophetic for all nations all over the planet. Yes, it's Amen. individualized in a small uh, family, so to speak, but it's true all over the planet. There's needless division, needless division. 
because Yeshua, Jesus, has covered it all in his blood. Therefore, there mm -hmm. need not be divisions. It's the old way of thinking. It's the old way that has now been superseded by his blood. And therefore, we can keep unity. We can keep, we can love each other. Even if this is new to us, even if it's, in some ways, it seems unreasonable, it hurts. Nonetheless, we go the extra mile to keep that unity. So thank you both for your honesty and your prayers. That was a beautiful prayer from both of you. Praise God. And yes, we're going to put this into our cleansing the bride call, which we will do tomorrow also, focusing on this very same issue. And Susan has just written, this is a beautiful statement in the chat. We bind the spirits of jealousy, envy, and greed in the family. Lord, bring healing to Sabita's family. Bind them in your cords of love. Your will and desire is for families to look out for each other and care for each other. Yes and amen. Well said. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Wow, this is a major issue to preach and to teach about. Praise God. Well, let's look at the next slide. Now, you and I can write these declarations. They're powerful. The enemy hates them. That's why we ought to do it more often. And you can do this by yourself. You can do it in a group. You can have people read this. You make up your own based on the legal authority that the Lord has given you. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, he says, Behold, I give you, so you put your name there, I give you Armstrong, I give you Sabita, I give you Jeff, I give you Susan, the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing, here we go, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And you know, one of the earlier gifts of repentance that we don't have included on that one good teaching slide is from Mark 6, 12, and 13. In Mark 6, 12, it says they, that's the first disciples, went out and preached repentance. Verse 13 says, deliverance and healings then took place. So we have the authority to remove demons. We have the authority to remove illness and other kinds of diseases. Having preached repentance, they go together. So here, these decrees I'm going to just jump to the middle one here. The body of Christ, we decree that the body of Christ is awakened to the revelation and knowledge of the word of God. Those who desecrated our covenants with God must go. A day of reckoning come. And we decree those who reverse truth and call evil good or good evil are overruled by our authority, you must go. We decree those who distort the identity of who God is, you must go. We forbid you to rule over us, you will be replaced. Now we, re we decree Yahweh is the ultimate authority in heaven and on earth. Those who seek to compete with him, disregarding his words, saying their ways are better, you are a complete failure. You must go and will be replaced. We decree anyone who says God is dead or doesn't measure up must go. We forbid your rule. And we decree power from heaven is flowing to us and through us as agents of authority. We partner with the Lord and the world is changed. Yes, Pastor Armstrong is changing his nation in the Congo. Sabita is doing the same in, I believe you're in Malawi, right, sister? 
and Susan is in South Africa. I'm here in the States. Yes, we're the little people. Nonetheless, the power of the Holy Spirit comes through us and we are changing. We are changing every little bit, every day, every time you speak with someone else, they see that you are an ambassador of Christ. That's powerful. So you're changing the world. Praise God. Just also say here on this slide, 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3, it says, The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you, protect you from the evil one. Yes, 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 yes. Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Hope you'll get a copy of all these and make changes, do whatever you wish. Well, this is a slide that tells you who we are so that you can keep us in prayer. Please keep Susan and me in prayer. We are volunteers. We need to pay bills. We need donations. And they come from our website. One web website is repentday.com. The other one is globalrepent.com, where you can make a donation. And we have materials for you to even start your own repentance small group. It's called Take the Repentance Route. We do these Zoom calls every week. This one to focus on Israel. Another one tomorrow on cleansing the bride. Then on Thursdays, we do Africa. I'm sorry. Yes, Africa kneels earlier in the week. We do also Australia Neil. So we're reaching out with the very same message for the bride to be cleansed. That's the sole purpose of the National Day of Repentance. That's the name of this ministry. Please keep it in prayer. We're not supported by a church. We're not supported by a denomination. We are not yet supported by some nice big benefactor or foundation or whatever. So do keep us in prayer for God's provision. That's all we do is encourage repentance. Shuva, that's the word in Hebrew. And we do support other ministries, including um, our brother, Stephen Lazar. He's with Yeshua Messiah Ministries.com. Very strong voice for Yeshua, a Messianic Jew. And do please share your testimonies with us. When we get a testimony from you about how repentance has changed your life or those around you that you've been preaching to, from time to time, we put them together, we get them out to our mailing lists all over the planet. And so email us, Pastor Jeff, J-E-F-F -F, at repentday.com or Susan is at Hammer Susan One. That's at gmail.com. H a m m e r s u s a n one at gmail.com. Praise God. So thank you for your prayers. Yes, yes, yes. And praise God. Praise God. And also Sabita is saying, I'm starting a woman's ministry in repentance during the Malawi Africa Repentance Summit. I need the tools mentioned. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And Susan says, I'll send them to you afterwards. Praise God. Praise God. And yes, if you're listening in the United States, you can use the good old fashioned post office. Box 246, Middletown, California. That'll get to me. Your check made out to National Day of Repentance. And we've got about, I don't know, 15 or so people that each month make a check. It could be a dollar or two or more, whatever. It's, it's fruit that will abound to your account. Whatever the amount, you get the fruit as we see the National Day of Repentance. Encourage other nations and people. And this is a holy flame lit by this gift of repentance. 
Well, praise God. Let's look at the next slide. Yes. Now, any of you have a testimony as your time with the Holy Spirit today? And or any closing prayer in your heart? How has this two hours that we have spent together, how has this been for you? Do you, anyone want to testify on how we might improve it, how we might change it? Going ahead if you have a, an insight on that. We welcome that. Go ahead. Has it worked for you? Uh, Sabita is saying, God bless you all. I'll leave now, leading the woman's ministry Zoom starting at 8 p.m. So she's got to go right now. Thank you, sister. Great to have you on. Wonderful prayers. Well, Pastor Armstrong, can I ask you, could you do a closing prayer for us, brother? Can you hear us? Go ahead. If you have a closing prayer on your heart. I have a question. Oh, I guess we, we just lost him. Well, praise God. Susan, what about you? Are you at the point of being able to close this with a prayer, dear sister? Okay, no problem. I'm still here. <laughs> uh, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this message. Thank you for repentance. Thank you for giving us this gift of repentance, Lord. And I just want to just bring all the prayers to you that's been prayed for the bride, for the for the nations to come to you, Lord, but also for Israel, for deception to be removed in their midst, that their eyes of understanding will open up, Lord, and that they will start seeing who you really are, that they will start seeing and understanding that Yeshua is the Messiah that they've been waiting for for so many years already. Lord, I ask that the rest of the world will see you, Lord, as the Messiah, that they will see you as the, the one that brings salvation, the one that brings healing, that brings deliverance, that brings restoration, that people will see that you are the one, Lord, that makes everything new again, that you remove the enmity in our midst, Lord, that you bring healing and restoration, and that you change us and make us holy and pure again. I just thank you, Lord, for these times that we have, for these moments that we have, Lord. Even if it sometimes feel like it's like a, rep a repetitive meeting week after week, we need to get this message out, Lord, and help us to get this message out. Help us to understand it. Help us to preach it. Help us to share it. Help us to encourage each other, Lord, because this is the answer. Between repentance and forgiveness, Lord, between changing our lives, changing our minds, forgiving others, obeying you, submitting unto you, Lord, that is what brings the healing in our families, in our midst, in our lives. That is what brings change. That is what brings restoration in our countries, Lord. And that is what brings healing and freedom and help us to live a righteous life and holy unto you. Lord, help us to get the message, help us to get the message out and help us to just preach it and continue to share it across the world and across the nations. And I ask you, Lord, that you will send more and more workers in the harvest that we can get this message out, Lord, help more and more people to come and join hands with us and to start grasping the message and start working with us and Share the message and get this message out, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray that you will just protect us, put your, or keep your blood over us, Lord, that whatever sees the blood of Jesus on our lives will pass, pa pass us by, will pass over us, because you are our Passover lamb that's been slain. And we thank you for that. We appreciate your blood. We appreciate the work that you've done. And as you cried out on the 
uh, Cross Lord, it is finished. I just echo that. And I say your work is finished. It is done. And we need to just stand on that authority and proclaim it and hold on to it. In Jesus' name I pray. And I thank you for it all, Lord. Keep us safe and bring us back safe for the next call next week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How beautiful. I, every single word was spot on, Susan. Love it when you pray. You really, the Holy Spirit uses you. So, so beautiful. Well, Amen. shalom, shalom, shalom until tomorrow. Yep. Until tomorrow. Another cleansing the bride tomorrow. Praise See. God. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Pastor Jeff. Enjoy the holiday and enjoy the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> kind of like the Drachen, is it the Drakenberg Mountains in South yes. Africa? Somewhat similar. similar. Somewhat, Somewhat similar. similar. Yeah. Our Drakensburg Mountains is full of snow <laughs> at the moment. Ah, well, no, there's no <laughs> snow here now, but um, <laughs> the trees are beautiful and it's a good change of pace for me. So thank you. Enjoy. Okay. Enjoy. Thank I you. can't wait to get out of the house and see something new. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're next. You're next. Oh, please let it be. <laughs> Yeah. Thank yeah, you, Pastor yeah. Jeff. All the okay. best. Enjoy. All the best. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Blessings. Bye -bye Shalom. Bye-bye. Shalom.